Welcome to another rendition of Concertina Styles and Smiles. Today we have Arnie Schweiss. I don't know if that's famous or infamous. What word should I use here? Anyway, he was telling me a little off the air when he started playing concertina, it's so long ago that the Dead Sea was only sick at the time. That's a long time ago. So, when did you start playing? About 12 years ago, I was 12 years old. 12 years old, okay. When they bought, my folks bought me that little one from Eddie Wilford. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he used to live right across the street from Smiley's Bar. Oh, house, right here on North, Fifth the North in Minnesota. Still there, yeah. yeah. With the, with the uh, music figures on the house, mm -hmm. flat roof. Yep. That's where we bought the first concertina. Was it something like this? this one, one just here? like that. Okay. $75. That, that was a lot of money back then. Oh, that was a lot of money back then. Yeah. yeah. That was high price back then. Did you start on your own or did you have. Well, I had a neighbor boy. He had a concertina too. He was a beginner. And he had a music sheet. One sheet is all he had. And that was the sheet for the Isabella Waltz. And uh, he taught us how to play that. And me and he taught me and my brother. The way he done it, he, he uh, went by the numbers on the concertina. Mm -hmm. And there was numbers on that music sheet that he had. And what we learned by doing it that way, he told you what, now, what buttons to use, and it also told you how to push or pull, that it was all on that sheet, and, and how long to hold the button. But he says, you don't have to follow that, uh, that note. Just uh, use your numbers to get used to that and play it the way you sing it. Do you mind if I ask you what year that was about? Oh, golly. Twelve years old. I'm, I'm 98 now, so what year would that have been? Uh, 1931. 32, somewhere around there. And there's almost, yeah. yeah. Do you still remember the Isabella Waltz, the first waltz you learned? Yeah, I can play it. Well, want to play a little of it or all of it? Uh, all right. Should I join in with it? <laughs> First, for, first piece I learned how to play. So, and where we, did you grow up? Where is your home? home no, no, uh, we lived uh, north of Fairfax, three miles north of Fairfax at that time. Mm -hmm. Right on Highway 4? <clears throat> yeah, one mile west of Highway 4. Okay. Where Don Myers and them people live now. But uh, we had a uh, my, my folks, they chased us out the cow barn with it all the time. When we tried to learn how to play it, you know, because we made a noose, such a big nuisance out of ourselves in the house. They chased us out the cow barn. And then we took our music sheet along out there, and then that's how we got started. Then you were a nuisance to the cows then? Yeah, and right? the cows even listened. They did. <laughs> yeah, they did listen. Okay. <laughs> that's how we got going, just with the numbers. So if you came to town, was that with your an older Model T or 65 Cadillac? What did you come to town with to buy a concertina? No, that was a, what that, that was a Model A, 28 Model A Ford. Okay. And did they have roads coming here too, or all Yeah, gravel? all dirt roads. Dirt roads, okay. All dirt roads, yep. Yeah. The first, uh, our first car was a Model T. And uh, we went to New Orleans with that one time. And uh, on the way home, we had to make sure the gas tank 
was completely full of gas because uh, you climbed the hill out there by Boisman Bridge, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the gas tank was under the front seat of the car, and uh, going up the hill, if it wasn't full of gas, it was gravity feed, mm -hmm. the engine wouldn't get the gas, and it, so I had to turn around and you backed it up the hill. And then when we got up the hill, we turned it around and all the way we went. The way you, yes. Yeah, that's what I remember, that real plane. You were telling me a story once about when you drive to town and then the ruts would freeze overnight or something? Yeah, they had black roads with no gravel or no nothing. And uh, in spring of the year, you know, when the ground started thawing, you know, we went to town, our neighbors and all, and then we had a pretty good track going down in on the road. Mm -hmm. So and then the next morning, if you got up early enough before the sun come up and thawed, you get that Model T lined up in them tracks and crank her up and away she go. You didn't even have to touch the steering wheel. She went to town on her own. Oh, sure. But you had to be ready to grab it in case it would jump, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the way it went, though. She went all the way to town on its own. Okay. Model T. <laughs> So I understand now you've been in a, a drainage system, sewer system, drain system business? Yeah, since 1947. That's oh, what I, that long? my first, I, uh, I was the one of the first guys in this area that pumped out subsidy tanks. Mm -hmm. And my first tank was uh, a pail and a five gallon, a five gallon pail and a rope. And, and a ladder, I get down in there and fill the pail and I crawl up on the ladder and mm -hmm. pull the rope and pail out and dump it. And them Back days on. you could dump it anywhere, so it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, then from the pail and rope, I went for a, a hand pump with a four foot wooden handle on it and I pumped it into a open stock tank or something that I had on the hay rack, you know. And, mm -hmm. And when that got full, we hauled it out of the field and tipped the tank over and dumped it and come back and got another one until the tank was empty. Coming back to your music playing, we, I got off the track there a little. What was the first job you played or did you play in neighborhood bands or barn dances? Barn dances, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I had a neighbor that he had a, that concertina and then another one had a button key accordion. And we had a little beer and brandy in the barn too. And you know, things went really pretty good. It didn't make much difference what button you were hitting. Yeah. <laughs> and the cows were all down there. Cows were less big to beat off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And then, uh, this here's got electronic in it too. Mm -hmm. And a, a shuffler. And a, he died, that yeah. Scheffler. Lauren Scheffler. Lauren Scheffler. He put that in this machine for me. And uh, we got talking. And I said, you know, I can play a little, pretty good a little already, and, but if I drink a half a glass of beer or something, it throws everything out of whack. And Lauren says, I know what you said. We played a wedding dance one time. And we had a fifth of whiskey and off of the stage and some beer, and everything was going smooth as hell. We had a heck of a time. And, uh, but what we, what we did not know was uh, somebody taped it and played it back to us the next day. They couldn't believe it was them playing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you remember the barn dance or wherever that was? Oh, yeah, I remember a lot of barn dances. Lots of, we had one on our home place. We built a hog barn that had a hay off of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some barn dancers in there too. Yeah. Luckily, we, we done a lot of cigarette smoking in them days, you know, yeah. but we never burnt the barn down. No, yeah. we were lucky with that. Yeah. Do you remember what the second tune you learned on a concertina was, sir? Do do. Let's hear it. I, I don't. I need the sheet for that oh, one okay. yet, because I don't play that one very much. Mm -hmm. I play some polkas, but... I would have followed you, but I don't remember 
remembered that one. I, 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 I don't remember very good either, yeah. but it's still there. Yeah. It comes out, you know. What's See, the name of it? Forgot the name of it even. Yeah. See, I heard a rumor from your daughter. You said you're 97? 98. 98. That you have a place rented for your 100th birthday? Yeah, it's already rolled up in the American Legion. So you better show up for that, huh? Well, I plan to. Yeah, you paid for it, I guess, so you better it's show up. It's all settled, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I always tell everybody I'm good for another 100 years unless something goes wrong. Yep. <laughs> you, you had your 90th birthday there too, didn't you? Yeah, and I ate it. Oh, oh that's and why I ate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel pretty good. Well, right now I I was up. I had to go to the uh, for up to the doctor this morning, and they put a they put this patch on here, and I gotta wear it in a week. Okay. And that tells you what the heart's doing. Uh huh. But I bluffed the guy, I bluffed the nurse. I said my heart ain't here. It's in my back pocket. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she said, well, I'll take it off then, put it back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, you were telling me a story once about you were Kirchgate going to church with the Model T and... This, oh, yeah. The, the, my, what did you call it? The tiller come off? Yep, my mom was driving the car. And uh, us kids were in the back seat and down the ditch we went, but the ditch was going very deep. They were only maybe two feet deep them days. Mm -hmm. But we got down in there and tipped it over. It was in the spring of the year, the grass was green already. So uh, we rolled the cushions, fell on top of us, you know, and we got up and uh, cleaned the grass off our pants. And pretty soon another neighbor was coming along with his car to church. Mm -hmm. And he stopped and a couple of guys grabbed a hold of the mountain and set her up on the wheels. and put the steering wheel on and we had a nail and a hammer to drive where the cutter key went in to hold it. Throw that nail and then we went to church. Got a little late, but we got there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So when did you move to town or move to New Ulm or whatever? When did you? Well, I got married in 1945. See, uh, my first wife died in 1985 already. Okay. And now I'm married 30 years for the, with the one I got now, but she's now in the nursing home too. Mm -hmm. So I gave her a little bad time there the other day. I said, maybe I better do a little shopping. <laughs> yeah. You told her that? Yeah. She, 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 <laughs> had she, a, she laughed. She, oh, I thought she said, you can go home now? No, she's oh. comical. She, she gets a kick. She can tell us. She's pretty good at that way. Okay. And, uh, oh my gosh, them old days. Did you ever but, play with any bands? No. Oh, you never? Just, no trumpets? And... Well, maybe another guy or so, two of us, mm -hmm. you know, but never with a band, no. Okay. No. I, uh, I had trouble with stage fright. Took a long time to get over that. Just wait, hold it. You had trouble with stage fright? I, I don't believe that. I did have. Okay. Yeah, I was free tight. I could, even if I had, well, you know, in my younger days, I had done a lot of booze, and I went to the bottom of the barrel one time, just about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I become an AA member for 28 years. And okay. uh, that helped me out. They gave me the tools, but if you don't use them, they don't do a bit of good. True. Yeah. You've got to use them. Yep. And I got that. What what was that question you asked me now? Oh, about when you first moved to New Ulm. Oh. And if you played in any. Yeah, when big I got bands. married the first time, we had on a six acre farm, and uh, right across the road there was one for sale for $110 an acre. Where was this at? North of Fairfax. Okay. Yeah, three miles north. And then uh, I said to my dad, let's buy that. No, no, he says, we got the home place paid for and I'm not going to do anything like that. And uh, 
Well, then they said, we'll rent you the farm here and then we'll go to town. But I didn't want anything to do with livestock. I didn't want nothing. I wanted to get out of the bed and get on the tractor and go out in the field. No livestock. The farmer, Dad says, you can't farm that way. You got to have chickens so you can pay your or cream check. You got to have cows and pay your pay your bills each month. You can't do it that way. Yeah, I said that's the only way I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And it worked out that uh, we run it for two years. They come out every day, every night, and complain about what we were doing wrong about a refrigerator, <clears throat> you don't need a refrigerator, the butter goes down the well pit, but we always have it. Yep. And then I bought a milk machine, we only had 10 cows, but I still bought me a milk machine. Oh, mm -hmm. That went over pretty big, I'll tell you, when my dad saw that. For oh, 10 cows. For 10 cows, yep. Mm -hmm. And then I put in a gutter cleaner too yet. Oh, what did he cuss? He was so mad. And I was mad, my wife and my mother, they were fighting all the time. But anyhow, on a Sunday one time, I was using the clean out the cow barn with the scudder, chain goes around the, the, the gutter. Yep. gutter, yeah. And the darn chain slipped off the sprocket on the end. This was on a Sunday. And sure enough, here comes Dad down to the barn. And he was cussing, he says, Doc Gunner, he says, when I was out here, I cleaned that gunner with the scoop shovel, now you're cleaning it with the hands. Yeah. He didn't go for that either. Yeah. It got so bad, we just up and quit. Were you one of the first ones with the barn cleaner? Yeah, I was one of the first ones. And I was, and the way I wanted to farm that time, that's the way they're farming now. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I wanted to do in 1947. But, you, but he went through that 1930 depression, and that's what scared him. Uh -huh. he, uh, he just couldn't take it, I guess. But anyway, he didn't take a chance for nothing. And uh, so then he sold the farm for $145 an acre, no, $140. And he said, once in a lifetime, you get a price like that. But he was wrong. It went to the next year, it was 200, 300, 400, 500. It went up to 1,000 in a short time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he realized he made a mistake and it just worried himself sick. He died at the age of 63. Okay. He, always, he realized he made a mistake. And, uh, but, then the neighbors and everybody told him, well, buy another one. But when you want to get $140 an acre for a farm, then buy another one for two fifteen hundred or 2000 By the time he was ready, well, was to, we couldn't do it. Right. Yeah. See, do you know another tune that's hiding in here? Oh, Pretty Dancing Girl. Are you going to sing along to that one? No, you do the singing. Oh. I know why you want to play. Did you and the wife go to a lot of dances, like at the armory and... Oh, all over. Was there a dance hall in my first? second wife here now, 30 years we're married again, and we never missed a dance. Okay. Danced all over the time. Was there a dance hall in Fairfax? Yeah. As a kid? My or? first one. <laughs> my first way. But the first way. Yeah. <laughs> we had to dance in the Fairfax Hall, and the next morning we heard the darn thing burnt down the whole <laughs> Yep. Okay. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it worked out that night. <laughs> Do you remember who was playing? 
Yeah, I almost shy. When he was a young guy, I almost shy, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the player. And then at and the Mrs. Time they all while well, we were, we went to a lot of those dances before we got married, but Elmer. And when in the mission he'd go up be up for their lunch, and he'd always have his concertina up on the stage mm -hmm. and I'd be sitting there to, trying to play it and figure out how that works. Oh, well, I can remember that. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any um another short fun story before we the end of the session here? Oh, yeah, well oh, yeah, Oli and Sven, you know, they went for an airplane ride. Oli and Sven? Okay. Only in Sven. I want to hear this just one. A four plane airplane, four place airplane like I used to fly myself. Just wait. You flew an airplane, or you? Oh yeah, I flew for two years, but at that time I didn't have enough money, so I couldn't. I rented the airplane, and it was fifteen dollars an hour at that time. And I suppose now it's one hundred and fifteen an hour. I don't know. Was that local, like here at New Orleans? Or no, uh, by uh, Sleepy's. Springfield is where my instructor was. Okay. Yeah, I flew across New Orleans a lot of times. But Ole and Sven. Yes, Ole and Sven were they flying. They were sitting in the back seat, and then all of a sudden, Sven says to Ole, "Look at that pilot. He's as pale as a bed sheet, and the sweat just running off his face." And Ole says, "No, he's not sick. The reason he's sweating so bad is that fan out there in the front stopped." <laughs> that would make us sweat a little. Yeah, it would. Folks, thanks for listening to another rendition of Concertina's Styles and Smiles. Again, Arnie Schweiss. Thank you, folks.